All right, here we are. Uh, group stage round two uh, between 501E and Knights of the Windmill. We have 501E in the blue here playing as allies, Knights of the Windmill in the red playing as Axis. And we can see the first objective here, uh, Doristin Hova. Um, looks like Knights of the Windmill are not going to try to defend that. I'm just going to show you the map real quick before we get into the action. Uh, second objective is Hotel Switzerland. And then we have Heelsome, Storehouse, Rimzikt, and that's it. So it looks like uh, Knights of the Windmill are maybe setting up uh, at Hotel Switzerland first. And let's get a look at the action. Both these teams have completed two games uh, for round one. 501E had some uh, rather big victories as the scoreboard looks, um, getting one big victory point, uh, which means they won both matches against the team they played previously. Knights of the Windmill lost both matches, I believe. Um, and uh, right now 501E sits in second place in their group and Knights of the Windmill in third. Um, so we should be in for a pretty good matchup today. And we can see 501E all over the first objective, uh, which is right here, this house. Uh, very unlikely Knights of the Windmill would have been able to defend this on this particular lair. And I imagine through uh, this phase, uh, round two, you'll see every team with at least one capture point just because of uh, how close this first objective is to Allied Main. Let's see if we can take a look at what kind of armor each team is using today. Looks like 501E starting out with two tank crews, uh, two Churchills it looks like. Uh, very strong, I mentioned in the last match I casted. Um, very good armor, high HP and gets the APDS rounds, um, which are devastating against all kinds of armor. And let's take a look at what Knights of the Windmill are using. Let's see, one tank on the field. I'm not seeing a second one unless they're going on a bit of a flank. And it looks to be a panther. So we'll see how that one panther can match up against both Churchills. Uh, not going to be easy there for sure. We've got some long distance engagements over here on the west flank. Also anytime you're wondering uh, what the ticket count is, that's in the top right corner. And we can see that 501E has now captured the first objective. like they're making an aggressive push right down the road here uh, toward Hotel Switzerland. Decent perimeter set up by Knights of the Windmill, but lots of smoke being used. Uh, of course, the British faction gets the uh, white phosphor smoke, um, detonates on impact, gives a pretty good smoke screen, also does some HP damage uh, if you sit in that white phosphorus. See, we have a pretty aggressive rally in that barn there. Looks like they'll just about make it out of there. Oh, nope. Goes down to the MP40. Knights of the Windmill holding down this road pretty well. Gonna 
be difficult to push that road without armor support. Let's see if we can spot any fobs going up anywhere. There's some commander smoke coming in. Maybe not the best timing on that. I uh, didn't have any infantry close enough to take advantage. Uh, smoke that close to the point. But the AG could do some work on some of the guys in the buildings. And a uh, dive bomb coming in from Knights of the Windmill. Not sure what was spotted over there. Possibly a fob was up over there. like the H.E.R.D. was largely ineffective, possibly got this one kill over here. Looks like the Panther may be coming up on these Churchills shortly. Ah, so I did miss a tank. I think that's a Panzer 38T, if I'm not mistaken. I'm uh, going to have a very difficult time against the Churchills. Nice idea, trying to go on the flank uh, with a lighter, more mobile tank like this. Unfortunately, the Churchills are on this side, but it, uh, I'm not sure if they're going to spot this. If the commanders are keeping 360, they might spot this, but it looks like that's just a two-man crew there, so maybe no 360. We'll have to see how much the gunner is using his periscope. Looks like neither tank is uh, utilizing that periscope for 360, and now this Panzer 38T about to walk right into two Churchills, and this is not going to be good for the 38T. Oh, might just drive right in front of the Churchills. This is why periscopes are so important, guys. Ooh, and both Churchills starting to light up this 38T, and this is going to go down. It's only a matter of time. Stuck on the tree now. It's taken this many hits. And using the mobility to get around the back, that's what you're going to have to do. But yeah, with two Churchills there, uh, that was just bound to fail there. So, nice idea trying to get the light tank around the flank, but the Churchills were ready for that. And the infantry is holding out pretty well on the objective so far. 501E making some progress on the northwest side. Did manage to secure that building over there. Um, taking some auto cannon fire. Looks like King of the Windmill built a 20 mil over here covering this flank. That's a good spot for it, but the Churchills are coming down this way. And once the Churchills get up here, 20 mil is going to go down, but until then it might be able to hold off this flank. Maybe like to see them get that AT gun in position too, so when the Churchill comes up, they can deal with that. Got another Stuka coming in. Let's see if we can spot where that's going to land. Looks like uh, maybe they were going for the Churchills on that, but uh, the Churchills were pretty mobile the whole time. Bravo on you with the dive bomb. Ooh, might have got the Panther with that. Did indeed get the Panther with that dive bomb there. Didn't get a chance to see if that was mobile, but good hit nonetheless. 
and 2-0 on armor for 501e right now. This is uh, going to be their time to push. Their Churchills are more or less uncontested. As long as they can keep infantry around, make sure it doesn't get Fausted or Panzerschrecht. Should be able to push in on objective. King of the Windmills Infantry is holding for now. Uh, looks like they still have, I count, four rallies near objective, so they should be able to hold until those rallies go down. Um, but all the rallies are more or less on the same side of town um, where we have a squad of 501e pushing. So it's going to be very important that King of the Windmill, uh, which I'm going to call K, I don't know, King maybe. I keep tripping up on myself saying King of the Windmill. Um, it's going to be very important that they hold this area so their rallies don't go down. Two infantry flanking this squad over here. Let's get a look at the action a little closer to the ground. As they put a new rally out there. Sounds like the MG just got headshot. This radio man has his work cut out for him over here. See Skipper. Let's see Skipper get some highlights here. Goes, gets him in the end. And King holding this flank for now. But just more and more infantry coming in from 501e on this side. If we take a look at the map, we'll see how King is reacting, moving their forces around. So you can see a lot of they have a lot of guys in the west over here coming from that MSP. I have two new tanks up. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, we'll see how they can reinforce coming from the west. Uh, looks like some squads may have lost their rallies, judging by that. Or maybe they're trying to deal with uh, this southwest push from 501e. Uh, 501e starting to take some of these buildings near objective. So they are pushing in slowly, but they're taking some ground. And they, let's take a look at the armor engagement over here. Still have the two Churchills. Got a... Ooh... Panzer IV takes a hit, gun facing the wrong way. It's a shame the other armor wasn't up here quite yet for King. I think one more hit, this Panzer IV is going to go down here, most likely. Especially with its rear facing now. Get over this berm, it might have a chance. Ooh, but the other Churchill's lining up its shot. And down Panzer IV goes. So we can see how strong two Churchills working in tandem can be. Did get some light AT over on the Churchill. I think that's a damaged engine. Uh, possibly, ooh, might be a destroyed engine. But really no follow up. Uh, if that was just coordinated a little bit better, Panzer IV might have been able to take advantage of that. See Panzer Shrek coming for a second hit on the Churchill. But he's out of ammo now. Not sure if he's going to take a chance with the bundle grenade or uh, magnetic mine. Looks like he's just going to try to get out of there. And the engine is repaired on the Churchill. I imagine that's going to go back to main and repair at this point. Objective itself is neutral. Most of these buildings surrounding the actual hotel are on the capture point. So you don't actually have to take the hotel itself. Just being in the surrounding area is good enough. Big barrage coming in from King of the Windmill, but largely missed its mark. And 501e thinks they have this cap. They're already pushing up to the next point. It's a big gamble, but can have huge payoffs if it works. Let's 
like King of the Windmill clearing up some of the infantry over on the west, but taking a lot of casualties in the process. And 501E still has a foothold in this house. Trying to get a Panzer check in the window. Looks like he might have got one with that, but paid the price for it. Looks like Sergeant Alec Masson doing work with the Sten, but finally goes down. Looks like this is cleared out by King of the Windmill. And the objective was not yet captured, so I can't see what the cap status is like, but I'd imagine this is starting to go back in King of the Windmill's favor. So like I said, big risk pushing up to the next objective, and it looks like maybe that's not paying off now. And you can see Wehrmacht defended Hotel Switzerland, so King of the Windmill does successfully defend, and 501 is going to have to push back up. Might be good coming in from this angle, but might get caught out by, by any reinforcements coming from the MSP over there by King. See so a rally go up in this barn for 501e. Gonna have a new angle to attack from. Probably gonna walk right up on this rally. <clears throat> Take that out. So lots of good infantry engagements. Looks pretty even on the infantry front, but if you look at the tickets, you can see that King of the Windmill's already a hundred tickets down. And you gotta figure that's largely in part to the armor engagements. Three tanks going down, that's about 60 tickets. They're going to have to start winning some of these armor engagements if they want to win this match. Now 501E pushing up on this previously 501E occupied house. Good work with the Sten there. Captain Jack Ramirez pushing in there. Gotta figure an engagement on the stairs is gonna come soon. We'll take a look at that. Can't quite get the shot with the car 98. So house is back in 501E's control. 501E clearing out the hotel itself now. You gotta figure this is the point where 501E is gonna cap the objective. It's gonna be hard for a King of the Windmill to push in at this point. You can see a huge wave coming in from King of the Windmill from the west from the MSP, but not likely they'll get over there in time. And here's some artillery coming in, uh, probably right on the objective. Not gonna hold the objective, but might do some ticket damage at least. Let's see where this artillery lands. It's smoke. Maybe not the best use of smoke there. Don't really have infantry that can take advantage of that at the moment. So far, both smoke uses by each team have been a little uncoordinated with the infantry. You can see King of the Windmill slowly pushing in on this west side. Don't think they're going to get to that objective in time, though. See the quick cycling on that Lee Enfield got him to get the kill on the radio man and actually traded in the doorway there. And 501e does cap Hotel Switzerland, so two caps for 501e in the books. Now they're going to be pushing up on Heelsome, which is this uh, 
villa right here. On some layers, there is a 20 mil or an 88 in the yard there. Not on this layer, however. And this is a pretty tough one to push. Lots of open ground to cover, but you can see 501E has already got some infantry over here in the south, which is a decent area to push from. The windows of the villa don't see that way as well as other directions because of the tall trees on this side. And there is more building cover to be used. But King of the Windmill looking to sniff that out now. Maybe focusing on it a bit much, a bit too much though, as 501 he's starting to push down this road. But maybe not a strong enough push to do any real damage there. And something just went down over here. I think that was the MSP, I believe, for King of the Windmill. Oh no, it was uh, another panther, or is that a king tiger now? It's like a king tiger this time. Going down, some long range shots from the Churchills, must be using those APDS rounds. And something else is engaging this Churchill over here. Ah, there it is over there. Let's see what tank that is in a second. Churchill may be one shot from death here, one penetrating shot might get it. Churchill doesn't even know where it's getting hit from. Churchill goes down. I can't tell if... I think this Churchill might have eyes. Gets a hit. Is that another King Tiger, possibly? An engine is damaged. And it goes down. So they do finally get a Churchill, but at the cost of, I think, two King Tigers. And you can see the tickets now, just 501E is pulling far, far ahead with the tickets. Gotta wonder at this point if, if King of the Windmill might have just been better off without the armor at all. Uh, the Churchills haven't been doing much infantry support, just kind of staying on the flanks waiting for the German armor to come at them, and they have, and at a trade of, I think, six to one now. Uh, tickets heavily favor 501e, uh, largely because of the tank engagements there. So King of the Windmill might want to rethink how they're using their armor. Uh, is it really worth sending them on the flank when the Churchills aren't doing much out there anyway? At this point might want to try to rack up some infantry kills for tickets that way. It's going to take a lot of kills to make up the losses they've already suffered though. mistaken, I believe the meta is 5-man squads. I'll take a look at that in a second, see if 501e is using the 5-man squads. It is allowed in European Ladder Season 2. Of course, it allows for more specialist kits. And this rally is going to go down. 501e pushing hard on Healsome now. Most likely going to capture that. We'll go ahead and take a look at 501e's squad, see if they are uh, using the 5 man meta. Actually, no, for the most part, it looks like they're not. They do have. One smaller squad, uh, that might be their lodge. That's actually a vehicle crew. Okay. 
So they're not using the five-man meta. Um, maybe not full nine-man squads, but uh, maybe just enough to get every specialist kit, it, it looks like. Plus one rifleman for ammo, maybe? From what I can tell here, anyway. So we could say maybe no wasted kits. Um, one of everything, but no surplus of riflemen. Smoke coming in here. I imagine that's from 501E. Oh, the next objective that they have to push, I think, is at Storehouse. And you can see 501E already has a full squad on Storehouse. And this looks like it's going to steamroll pretty quickly once they cap heal some. That looks like uh, 2 3 2 here. From King of the Windmill. And we can see that 501E has now neutralized heal some. King of the Windmill is going to need their armor to do a lot of work in the second half of this match. Um, this can go downhill very quickly for them, otherwise. After Storehouse, they only have one objective left, and it looks like they're not going to have much chance of holding on to Storehouse right now with a full squad of 501e there. But I think this right here is what they need from their armored crews now. They need to start using it against infantry, but keep it protected with your own infantry. Right now it's a little bit alone, and you can see some infantry is already shadowing this 232. Imagine that might be AT, could just be someone spotting. Uh, it is just someone trying to keep eyes. Looks like he has a Bren in his hands. And 232 gets out of there. And we can see Healsome did go down. And if we take a look at the map, King of the Windmill has almost no one on Storehouse. Now actually no one on Storehouse that those uh, two guys up there died. So they're going to have to shift very quickly over towards Storehouse. Uh, they have about five minutes to get over there before 501E can start capping. Looks like the 232 might catch a transport vehicle out over here. Let's see if we can get eyes on that. Doesn't see it. And... I don't think the 232 has periscopes, but from the gunner position, I think you can still look out 360 uh, from the turret there. And it's very important that you do that when you play armor, so you don't miss things like that. Much harder with the two-man crew, though, so won't fault them too much on that. It looks like this might be AT in a jeep actually hunting that 232, so let's follow this a little bit. Let's see... Uh, First Lieutenant Jared Evans. I think he's hunting this 232. But again, the 232 doesn't see it. 232 is very difficult to keep 360 with its. Oh, and the Jeep goes past! <laughs> oh, and good kill right there from the Piat. So, nice play by First Lieutenant Jared Evans. Um, ballsy with the Jeep, but it paid off. But as I was saying, the 232, very difficult vehicle to keep 360. It's only a two-man crew, no periscope, so visibility is pretty poor. You're going to rely a lot on infantry, and you can see that he was lining up that MSP. That would have been a big help. Uh, cut off a lot of reinforcements from this new objective, and um, a little bit of ticket bleed. I think MSP's five, maybe ten tickets. We'll have to see if he was able to call that out, maybe get a dive bomb on that. If we take a look at the map though, King of the Windmill still not too close to Storehouse. They're starting to move in, but they're gonna have to move pretty quick, and now they have two Churchills in support, 501E does. And again, armor went down for King of the Windmill. We have a tank over on the east though. Let's see if it catches out the Churchill's unaware. Looks to be a Panzer IV. And 
I think you just have to question engagements like this at this point. Being down so low on tickets, you know the Churchills have been staying together. It's uh, easy to get bloodthirsty, but you might have to lay off in these situations, uh, knowing you're one Panzer IV against two Churchills. See what kind of infantry support he has over there, though. Minimal infantry support, but there is a rally close by. If, uh, King of the Window can get some AT spawned in there, help out this Panzer IV, it might be worth it. This Panzer IV has to know the Churchills in it. You gotta figure it's been called out. There he goes, rotating now. Gunner sees it. Lining it up. Gets one hit on the Churchill. Gonna be very difficult. Lots of HP on the Churchill. They have to do their best to get some critical. Did get the engine. Starting to shoot the MG so you can get, get the crewman repairing. It sounds like the engine's out on the Panzer IV too. It is. So crewman's getting out to repair there. Might get one Churchill here, if he can get the shot off in time. Does indeed get the Churchill, and I would say that's a pretty good trade if they weren't down solo on tickets. But you gotta figure this Panzer IV is going down at this point. Front armor of the Churchill facing. They use APDS, no way this Panzer IV is gonna last. You know, one more hit for the Panzer IV, so looks like it's pretty much GG for this Panzer IV right here. There we go. So I would say that would have been a good trade if you weren't already so low on tickets. Um, you gotta question those kind of engagements. You know those Churchills have been working in tandem and you had almost no support over here. So you might wanna work on those kind of engagements in the future, especially when you're so low on tickets. However, they're starting to take back uh, Storehouse over here. Um, pretty contested at the moment. Ooh, and I think this MG just got sniped by the revolver over here. Sergeant Daniel Walker with the Webley snipes. I think it's a Webley revolver if I remember right. Interesting over there. Here an auto cannon firing over here. Let's see what that is. So it looks like another scout car from King of the Windmill. It's another 232. Gonna really need to get that armor and effective engagements for the rest of this match. Uh, it's gonna be very difficult to get the win at this point for King of the Windmill. But if they are gonna do it, it's gonna come down to effective and efficient engagement engagements for the armor. And 501E has neutralized storehouse. King of the Windmill might wanna think about just pulling back to the next objective now, uh, setting up some kind of defense. Um, Maybe getting some emplaced guns set up. They're going to have to really turtle that last objective for a while if they want to win this one. You can see the time left is 53 minutes. Um, that should go up again once 501E caps this. So uh, it's going to be a long time to hold. But that's the only way to win now is to hold this last objective, which I think is this row of houses here. It is. They've already got guys here now, so they learned from their past mistakes with Storehouse and did have guys on the objective waiting, but 501E did not rush ahead this time. And already coming in on the point. Probably a good use of Artie there, um, if it can penetrate inside the Storehouse. Get some ticket kills for you, at least. And use that to cover your retreat back to the next objective. See if we can get eyes on any of the armor. We got a new tank coming up for King of the Windmill. 501E's got a sneaky squad coming from the southwest here. And if they can hold down this area right here uh, in Golf 13, that's going to be pretty big stopping any 
logistics or armor reinforcements coming from German main. I'm not seeing that 232 on the map. I wonder if that went down again. Looking at the tickets, it certainly is possible. Smoke coming in now on objective from 501E. Um, Again, just haven't seen very good use of smoke from either team today. Um, smoking this off, but it's a big area, and they don't really have infantry to take advantage of this right now. Um, you'd maybe like to see smoke on the north end if they're smoking for this squad. Not sure exactly what the intent is there. Personally, I also think mortars are more effective coming from logistics... Or, sorry, smoke is more effective coming from logistics mortars just because you can put so much more of it down uh, than you can as commander. You really need a lot of it to get an effective smoke screen. It's like a Panzer III here. And you gotta, you gotta hope this Panzer III sticks with the infantry, he tries to focus on infantry damage. You're not gonna be able to go against that Churchill with the Panzer III unless you have some kind of other support. See, I think a scout car over here, and something's burning. We'll check on that. We have a two-two-two over here again. Definitely have to fight infantry with that, and this might be a dead two-three-two. Is that what this is? Yeah, and the two-three-two did go down again over here. King of the Windmill, I think, really needs to focus on picking good engagements with their armor and, and knowing when to stick with infantry, especially when you're in a, a vehicle like the 232 that has very difficult uh, visibility options. You can rely on the infantry to be your eyes in that situation. Subjective can be very difficult to take, but it's also very difficult to hold. Um, lots of open ground, but once uh, once the enemy starts getting a foothold in this building, it's very hard to root them out. See some strafes coming and actually almost getting this MSP. There it goes, strafe gets the MSP there. Uh, almost, I think, got a team kill. But took out the MSP, so that's going to be huge. It's probably going to go down soon anyway with this rally right here from 501E. Took another tank engagement over here. That Panzer III went down. Just no infantry support for the Panzer III. You can see Churchill down the road, I think, was the one that got the kill, but just all this infantry support and a Staghound. Um, just not, not good engagements from the armor uh, from King of the Windmill right now. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wonder if uh, Mobile Jeep AT also played a part in that. But I think more than anything, uh, this game just came down to the use of armor by King of the Windmill. Gotta, gotta tighten that up a bit in the next one. Um, it's very difficult though, I will say, going against uh, two Churchills simultaneously. Um, you're not really going to be able to take them on unless you have two tanks working in tandem and probably some infantry support, which they just weren't able to do. Uh, tanks weren't working together really this whole time, I feel like. Meanwhile, uh, it seems like 501E always has their tanks supporting each other um, with the Churchills anyway. The Staghound was nearby on that last engagement. Not sure if they were there in time to play a role. Now this Churchill is more or less going to lock down this northwest side. Let's see where this Stuka is heading. Not sure what they were looking at there. Um, maybe they thought a fob was there, or just a bunch of infantry in there, thought they needed to stuka it, so 
Could have been a rally there. Might have missed that. Might be worth it for the rally. Now, if 501E can keep this Churchill supported, it's going to be devastating on this road, but you need lots of infantry support with all these buildings here. Okay, and the Churchill's just going over to the other side, trying to clear up that flank, and that way 501E can get in from both sides. You can see the tickets are draining fast for King of the Windmill. 501 is surrounding them on objective right now. And Staghound's over here watching the rear of the Churchill. This is the kind of tandem play you like to see with the armor. If you're not going to have infantry nearby, have another vehicle nearby at the very least. Especially in a Churchill. Churchill's very slow. You don't want to get caught out by yourself. Sneaky spot from this MG here. Not sure how much he's going to be able to do. Well, not a lot, apparently. That was a nice spot and good shot. 501E over there. Okay. 501E now has a good launch off point over there in the northeast. Strafe coming in over here. Mill did get over on this uh, destroy this rally over here for 501 but here is the MSP in the process and I'm not sure if there's any AT over here, there is not able to get a shot on the rear of that Churchill and with the front facing looks like that Churchill's probably going to get away seen that motorcycle. I wonder if I uh, dropped off the AT there. You see a GG in chat from 501E. I wonder if they're close to capping the objective. Looks like they are. And that's the game, so good good job by 501E there. Again, I'll say I think I'd like to see just a little bit better coordination from King of the Windmill's armor, but uh, GG all around. It's a fun match. Hope you enjoyed.